best for soil, green manures and cover crops, advantages and disadvantages. Hello, my name is Vincent and I do a lot of research on the use of green manures to reduce soil-borne diseases. Therefore, I am aware that this practice has a lot of advantages but also some disadvantages. They will be presented in this Best for Soil video. The effect of cover crops and green manures are not specific and they can affect a wide range of soil-borne diseases simultaneously. As they don't have a specific single mode of action, it is extremely unlikely that pathogens or nematodes will develop resistance to these approaches. It is a natural method and therefore widely accepted, especially by consumers and environmental organizations. In rotations with a dominating group of plant species, for example, several brassica species in a vegetable production system, Cover crops or green manures can be used as a break crop that interrupts this sequence and thereby reduces the pressure of soil-borne diseases. A break crop is a crop that is not host to the same diseases as the main crops and thereby breaks the disease cycle. More information on this topic are given in the Best for Soil video on crop rotation. Fast-growing and deep-rooting plants can be used to fix the nitrogen that is mineralized in the soil during the warm summer and autumn months. This reduces nitrate leaching into groundwater during the winter period. Cover crops protect the soil surface against wind and rainfall, strongly reducing incidences of erosion. They also improve water infiltration, which is especially useful in cases of heavy rainfall. Furthermore, the dense root system of cover crops stabilizes soil, particularly important on sloping sites. Covering soil during the winter is a legal obligation named greening. With the right choice of cover crop, this obligation can be used to improve the soil health status. Compared to other control methods, such as steam sterilization or the use of chemicals, in many cases the use of cover crops is cheaper. Green manures and catch crops return easily available nutrients to the soil. Catch crop, which are grown to avoid nutrient losses, particularly nitrate losses, help to save money, as less fertilizer has to be applied to the following crop. The growth of cover crops improves soil structure. Deep rooting species with big tap roots, such as brassica crops, improve the infiltration rate of water and thereby reduce the loss of rainwater through runoff. Even a fast-growing cover crop needs at least two months cultivation time in the summer and a much longer period during the cooler part of the year. During this time, the land cannot be used for crops that could be harvested and sold. For certain special cover crops, such as marigold or specific cultivars, seed availability can be a problem and should be planned well in advance. When a farmer grows a new cover crop, a lack of knowledge of the crop and not having access to the correct seeding equipment can be a major constraint to successful establishment of the crop. In some countries, regulations exist that restrict the incorporation of green manures or impact on other aspects of their agronomy. Cover crops and green manures can be host plants of soil-borne pathogens or nematodes, which may also have the ability to infect the major crops grown in the rotation. In such cases, they may increase instead of decrease the presence and pressure from soil-borne diseases. When cover crops are not removed or incorporated before the formation of seeds, they themselves can become a weed problem, especially grass species. The best for soil databases for host and non-host plants of pathogens also includes a wide range of cover crop and green manure species. This allows farmers to include them in the planning of sound and robust crop rotations.